Thank you to those who answered the call to light up the candle. For you have brought more light to our community. When I listened to the 67 names, I was terrified. There were at least four teenagers on the list. When Asha Garcia died, he was at a high school, eighth grade student in Francis, Minnesota. He suffered sexual and physical abuse as a child, and those repressed memories dug their way to the surface like a bad dream, but he could never wake up. Asher died at the age of 14, suicide. While a scar died, he has been in a state custody for five years since 2017. While awaiting placement, he ran away from the hospital where he was taken for concern related to a known medical condition. As died at the age of 15, his body was found in an abandoned lot in Kansas City, Missouri. When Serena Bergman was last seen, he was at a high school football game. Family members said they had struggled with mental health issues. Serena died at the age of 16. Their body was found in the Wetmat River, Salem, Oregon. Before Ariana Mitchell died, she was at a house party. A 19-year-old man asked Ariana if Ariana was a boy or a girl. Then he pulled out a rifle from his car. Ariana died at the age of 17 in Hampton, Virginia. Their stories are sacred and perplexing to, to us. Many of us might think their life could be different and deserve better. Most of us are wondering why they must experience any of this. The Hebrew people are wondering the same questions facing their con condition and context too. The book of Isaiah was composed when the Hebrew were captured by the Babylonian Empire and afterward. The incident included in this book was from the 8th century BCE, the fallen sign of Judah, an exile to Babylon in the 6th century BCE, and then the return under the Persian king, Cyrus II the Great. This period spent around 200 years. This book also provides us with how the prophet responded to the challenges in quite different ways from time to time. Before the fall of Judah and Jerusalem, the prophet pointed out that the leader lied to the people and also pointed out the injustice in the nation and the society. The judgment of God will come and ruin all handmade glory. The prophecy continued to say God's temple will be rebuilt, and one day the survivor of Zion will return. When there was no more Judah, and the Hebrews were exiled from their homeland, and prophet pro pro provide another prophecy, God promised a child to be born to them. Authority rests upon this child's shoulder, and the child will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Abba, and Prince of Peace. This mission of Isaiah is providing hope to the hopeless, although someone might think that was surreal and just a dream. There's more in this book, such as in chapter 66, a vision provided that woman can give birth without labor, undoing the curse of Eve in the book of Genesis. We knew the story in Genesis is used to justify woman's sufferings 
from giving birth and the stereotype of being interior to a man. In chapter 60, you should suck the milk of nations, you should suck the breasts of kings, not from the queen. And you also know, you also should know, I, the Lord, am your savior and your redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. All the enemies of Israel are now the source of nutrition for the renewed place of salvation and praise. It is quite unnatural, but very inspiring. In chapter 55, the prophet promised there will be free water for those who are thirsty, not only for the male masculine royal Hebrew, the people in Jerusalem, and those Adonai Adonai's worshiper. It's a clear astrological vision that all people are freed from the constrictions of religion, ethnicity, nationality, and gender roles to enjoy the water. In Christianity, we may call it the living water. This God, Adonai Adonai, Isaiah proclaims, is beyond all the barriers. None can control or put any limitation to God's doing, even in the darkest hour. Being captured, exiled, or having been oppressed, this God, Adonai, Adonai, Isaiah proclaimed, is a God above all nations, religions, God of peace and justice for all. One of the contributors of the Queer Bible Commentary Timothy Koch argued that if we also believe there are at least three Isaiah in this book, each of them connect to their context closely, as most of the biblical scholars show us. It is self-consciousness in Timothy Koch's word. Each Isaiah provides their people with a vision of hope and a kingdom of peace at their time and point out the cause of suffering. Those prophet Isaiah's in peril challenge the long history of biblical traditions, even literally what has written in Torah, debate with the popular theological settlements and ideology in order to bring the light and hope to the people of God, the suffered ch children of God, no matter what the society norm or the political environment were. Then here today, we are challenged to be the fourth Isaiah. Timothy Court argued, quote, who should also self-consciously connect ourselves and our vision to this tempestry with the pain as well as the comfort that entails we then also be making an essential and lasting contribution to everyone who is and who is yet to come, a work of art that is not just woven what has come before, but which in turn become a takeoff point for the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, and all the subsequent Isaiahs. A survey in 2019 regarding the relationship between religion and attitude toward transgender and gender-variant people point out that a consistent evidence that self-identifying as with either being religious or as Christian was associated with increased trans prejudice relatively to being non-religious. Additionally, we found consistent evidence that certain form of religiosity were also related to trans prejudices, such as religious fundamentalism, church attendance, attendees, and the interpretation of the Bible as a literal. Christians, just like us, who are supposed to read 27 more books than the Jewish people in their own Bible, hold far more conservative and toxic thought and behavior toward transgender and gender variant folks than the Jewish people do. In other words, Christianity played a role as a major cause 
of transphobia and hatred crime toward transgender and gender non-binary people in the United States. In 2021, Time magazine revealed a survey point out that 26% of LGBTQ youth identified themselves as gender non-binary. An additional 20% of the youth are unsure or are questioning themselves as transgender. It's a huge number of youth among us. The Pew Research Center also revealed a survey this year that about 5% of the young adults in the United States say their gender is different from their sex assigned at birth. It's also the fact in our society. A fourth grade kid, Kai Shepley, testified in front of the Texas Senate on April 2, 2021, regarding state bill SB 1646. It's the bill that would redefine child abuse to include con consenting to or assisting in the administering or supplying of a beauty suppression descriptions drug or cross-sex hormone to a child. The result will criminalize parents, guardians, medical workers, and pharmacists who try to help a trans kid obtained medically approved treatment. In her testimony, Kai Shep Shepley rebuked legislators who support this bill on religious ground. Kai Shepley said, I love ballet, math, science, and geology. I spend my free time with my cats, my chickens, FaceTiming my friend and dreaming of when I will finally meet Dolly Patton. I do not like spending my free time asking adults to make good choices. Texas legislators have been attacking me since pre-K. I am now in fourth grade now. God made me, God loves me for who I am, and God does not make mistakes. Please listen to me, listen to everybody. If a child has been become an activist, we have already failed that child. Quote from John Oliver, we also failed the trans child, Asha Garcia, S. Scott, Serena Berman, and Ariana Mitchell, and the 60 plus names we heard today. And there are more outside the list. Today, we light out a candle for city servant of our transgender sibling. We hope we have made a difference, although it might still too tiny and not enough. Like the prophet, we consciously provide a vision of hope and seek the peace, not only for the life we lost, but also to a reminder there should be no more cry of distress. The systematic oppression toward our trans siblings should stop here and now from ourselves. In the United States, there are only around 6% of the Christian churches that open arms to embrace LGBT people. You hear me right, 6%. Since January, our church has responded to the call from the three denominations from United Church of Christ United Methodist Churches and Presbyterian Church USA. We respond to those three denominations and recognize the pain of, of marginalized uh, and, and oppressed group. We declare ourselves as open affirming congregation, a member of our reconciling ministry network and more like Presbyterians. We are on the journey of becoming more inclusive and engaging followers in the body of Jesus Christ. Some of us attended the event yesterday at the church library. We learned more from the HBO documentary, The Trans List, and we share how we could do more together. I believe this is the ministry of transformation 
that we, as the fourth Isaiah, are called to do in our context, not only for the open affirming team, not only for our young adults among us, but also for the people outside our church and the congregation to come. We are a collective, the fourth Isaiah, are expanding the kingdom of peace. The scripture we know for Advent very well. The people who walk in the darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. This vision is from God through Isaiah, through Jesus, and to us, and through us, to our community and generation to come. In High Park, we have lots of fantastic groups doing incredible work. I have had the opportunity to visit one of them in person two months ago. It's Brave Space Alliance on the 52nd place. Nia Mona, the health and wellness program manager, greeted me at the front door. She gave me a tour. Maybe some of us have no idea about this group. A Brave Space Alliance is the first black-led, trans-led LGBTQ center dedicated to creating and providing affirming culturally component. They try to share their thought and empower each other. So Nina gave me a tour. So I see the whole space there. I saw there's uh, several makeup rooms, a dressing room, and a consulting room, and a room for a hot shower and a bath, and free clothes and a food pantry. I asked Nia, how is the food pantry going? And she told me, anyone who is in need could come over here. They could take an entire bag of food with them. We also check in with them. We also have a list of men to be delivered. 2,000 meals a week, they deliver to the people of color and trans folk. They are also hosting a three days event, Trans Weekend of Resilience. Resilience. This weekend from November 18 to 20, they connect the Chicago Therapy Collective the Human Rights Campaign, the Chicago Department of Public Health, and Equality Illinois. I was surprised, impressed by their work. It seems to me is a vision I encountered two months ago. It was a six-wing seraph that I encountered at the door, and the seraph guided me to the sanctuary of God, the sacred mountain for all God's children. I would like to use the scripture today to give a note and comma to finish this uh, message this morning. The following vision might be strange and quote unquote unnatural to some of us, but I can see it's coming through our congregation and community in High Park on Transgender Day of Remembrance. Before they call, I will answer while they yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion should eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food should be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, our God, the God love all the creation. The, our God has many names. Today we listen to your word. We devote ourselves to become the first Isaiah to continue your work in our society. May you guide us and help us. Be with us. Let us know how can we follow you. How can, how can we know how can we really serve our community? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>